are two core, two systems of cores. Ten, Mississippi. Two, the fourteenth. Um, all right, Secretary of State. Secretary of State deals with everything outside of America. Deals with everything outside. Hi, and welcome back to Mr. Raymond's Civics EOC Academy, where today we are going to be looking at political parties. Now, I hope most of you are familiar with political parties. Maybe you know which party your parents or a family member are. And if you don't, this would be a great time to ask them, what party are you in? And why? So hopefully you're at least familiar with the Democrats and Republicans. And these are the two parties that dominate American politics. We see here President Obama, who is a Democrat, when he was running against Republican candidate Mitt Romney. Now, America doesn't just have these two parties, but we'll explain that more in a minute. First, let's look at our benchmark. And this is to identify America's current political parties and illustrate their ideas about government. So we have to pick out who the big parties are, and we have to talk about and be able to identify their ideas. I also, teachers, have a wide variety of lesson plans, including this PowerPoint on Teachers Pay Teachers. Just search for Mr. Raymond Civic COC Academy. So we see here our definition for a political party, which is a group of people who share the same views about the way governmental power and responsibilities should be carried out in this country. But really, what people in a party usually share are common opinions about the issues the country is facing and about what the government should do about it. Now, one thing to remember about politics is that there are no absolutes. Not all members of a political party agree on everything. Most Americans pick one of the two major parties that they share the most in common with. Now, something that you need to keep in mind, especially for your state exam, is that there is nothing about political parties in the Constitution. They just happen naturally. And you remember from our previous video that the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists who go on to become the Democratic Republicans, the Anti-Federalists. These first parties were started by people who disagreed about the power and responsibilities of the government. This is the same disagreement that the current political parties have. Basically, how big should the government be and how much should it do? Now, America has what is known as a two-party system because two parties have dominated the political process from the beginning. We see here at the beginning the Federalists and orange and the, and the Democratic Republicans in green. Democratic Republicans disappeared with the election of Andrew Jackson. They just kind of split. And the Democratic Party was born here in blue. And they've been rolling ever since. Now, as the Federalists disappeared, we see here in yellow a party known as the Whigs that were around for about 20 years, pushing for government to build more infrastructure. Remember, that means like roads and at this point canals. And then the Civil war approached and politics turned and really focused on slavery and the Republicans appeared as the anti-slavery party with their first real presidential candidate Abraham Lincoln in 1860 and this is where we are today the Democrats and Republicans have been the two major parties for the last 150 years now hopefully you know some of these presidents we see here for Democrats, we've got FDR, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry Truman, John Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Bill Clinton, and our current president, Obama. Whereas the Republicans have Abraham Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, and our last president, George W. Bush. Now, what do political parties do? Well, they educate the people about the issues. They tell us what's going on and they try to steer us into the way we should feel about them. They nominate candidates, which is a huge help. Imagine if anyone who wanted to be president could run, you would have thousands of candidates. These parties narrow it down to two big candidates and then some other ones. They hold primary elections, and this is kind of how they weed down the elections down to one candidate per party. They raise money for the campaigns, all those great advertisements you see on TV. They help legislatures pass laws. In fact, the parties are often a big part of writing the laws that they want. And 
They write the party platform. This is coming up with the big ideas for their party. Now, what are some Republican core beliefs? So the Republicans are the major party that's identified with less government interference. In fact, it's fair to say that the Republicans want less government in general. Why? Because by decreasing the size of the federal government, you decrease the amount of taxes you have to pay. Remember, taxes are used to pay for all the things that the government does. And by reducing the things that it does, you reduce the amount of taxes you have to pay. Republicans are the party that is associated with being pro-business. They are for business. We see here fewer government regulations, and regulations are rules or laws. And the private sector is the business sector. The public sector is the government, the private sector is the business sector. Those are the companies and the corporations. So remember, think of Republicans as being pro-business. Now, two ways we describe the Republicans is they are conservative. If you are conservative, you don't like change. Republicans are also called the right wing, and this is where the parties fit on what is called the political spectrum. The more right you fall on the spectrum, the more you favor tradition over change or limited government over big government. If you are going to remember one thing about the Republicans, it is that they want to lower your taxes. And that requires lowering the functions and responsibilities of the federal government. Republicans promote the idea that if you lower taxes, people are gonna have more money to spend. And the more money people have to spend, the better the economy is going to do. And this brings us to the Democrats. The Democrats want the government to provide what are called services. And services are programs that the government implements to solve problems. And the Democrats want these services to provide opportunity for everyone. However, as we mentioned with the Republicans, this requires raising people's taxes. And this is really our biggest difference between the two parties. An example would be the Democratic support for helping to improve the environment, although they have been criticized by some environmental groups as not doing enough. Their support of government policies towards reducing the environmental impact of fossil fuels is an area where Republicans and Democrats have a big difference of opinion. Other Democratic issues have been the reforming of the healthcare industry. Both parties agree that our healthcare industry is broken and incredibly expensive. And we'll look at this a little closer, but the Democrats have taken the lead in addressing the issue. Democrats also want the government involved in helping provide access to education. A key issue for Democrats has been providing governmental loans to those who want to go to college. Democrats are also the party that looks to provide welfare programs to the poor, such as food stamps. Okay, and here's a closer look at some of the differences between the two parties. We see Democrats want equal rights and opportunities for the working and lower classes, whereas Republicans would say, hey, the people need to be more self-reliant and charities can fill in those gaps. Environmental protection for the Democrats over big business and Republican supporters of business with as little government interference as possible. The Democrats would say, Let's give assistance even if it means raising taxes. And the Republicans would say lower taxes leads to more spending, which helps the economy. The Democrats are strong for civil liberties and protection of those liberties from the government, whereas Republicans, well, they're strong supporters of the right to own guns. The Democrats want a strong military, but they're less likely to support war and Republicans are really into having free trade with other countries. We say the Democrats are left-leaning or liberal, and the Republicans often called the GOP, which stands for Grand Old Party, or they are right-leaning or conservative. So hopefully you're getting a sense of how these parties are different. I like to use my parents as an example of how these parties are different, as my mom's a Democrat and my dad's a Republican. Now, moms are kind of like Democrats in that they always want to look for ways to help people out, while dads want you to learn to be more responsible for your own needs. Sometimes we accuse my mom of spending a little too much money while my dad is like super cheap and being cheap he hates paying taxes. Now this analogy also demonstrates how these two parties kind of balance each other out. Again it's important to remember that these parties have more in common 
than they do differences. They both want a successful economy. They both want a safe country. For every dollar the federal government spends, about 70 cents goes to Social Security, which is money for retirement, Medicare and Medicaid, which is free health care for the elderly and the poor, and for the military. And both parties agree about those 70 cents, okay? Another seven cents just goes to interest. So really what the Democrats and Republicans are fighting over are those last like 23 cents. Of course, you know, that 23 cents adds up to billions of dollars. So let's take a closer look at some of the recent fights. And one of those is what's called the Keystone Pipeline. This is a pipeline to carry oil from Canada down to the Gulf of Mexico. Now, Republicans are in favor of this for two reasons because they say it'll create hundreds of thousands of jobs and provide cheap oil for Americans. A high number of Democrats are against this deal including Democratic nominees for President Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. They think that those job numbers are highly overrated. Not only that but that this will be bad for the environment. Another big disagreement that continues to be in the news is the Affordable Health Care Act often referred to as Obamacare. Democrats wanted to address the fact that tens of thousands of Americans can't afford health insurance, and health insurance is what pays for you if you have medical problems. This puts a lot of those people at major risk if some kind of health issue develops. Now, Republicans call Obamacare a tax on people who don't have health insurance, and this incredibly complicated debate, which we really don't have time to get into, demonstrates the Democrats Democrats' progressive governmental attempts to address issues and Republicans' conservative stance of letting the market solve problems. Do you understand what that means? Yes, it's complicated, but think of Democrats as wanting the government to change things and the Republicans kind of wanting to stay out of it. Now, even though America is called a two-party system, there are other parties in America, which we call third parties. Here we see some of their logos, the Green Party, the Socialist Party, the Libertarians. Chances are you haven't heard of these parties. And here's why. We see this cartoon, quote, I always waste my vote on a third party. That way I don't feel so guilty afterwards. Now, that's actually a jab at not the third parties, but at the Democrats and the Republicans. We've never had a third party candidate become president, although Theodore Roosevelt came in second once. He was a Republican president who ran later in his own party. But the presidency, the Congress, these have been dominated by Democrats and Republicans for a long time. So why do third party candidates run? Well, they run to have their opinions heard. They hope to influence the big parties and voters so that the big parties might take up some of their ideas. And here's a party that's had some success in getting their ideas out there, the Green Party. As you could guess by the name, their main focus is helping the environment. And they definitely help influence the political landscape as America becomes more environmentally friendly. Next is a party that has grown in popularity known as the Libertarians. They want to extremely scale back the influence of the government. They've had a lot of influence on Republicans, especially their faction known as the Tea Party, which is really the right-wing section of the party. But Libertarians think the Republicans are too much like the Democrats. Here we see one of the posters. Democrats want to control your money, but you can control your actions. Republicans want to control your actions, but you can control your money. Libertarians say, quote, we trust you to make your own decisions. We want you to control your money and your actions. So you might say that the Libertarians want you to have the liberty to do whatever you want without the government getting involved. Another party that was really big in the late 1800s and early 1900s is the Socialist Party. And a lot of European countries have more socialist tendencies than America. Socialists want more government welfare to help the people. For instance, socialist programs would be things like free health care and free college. Of course, that requires higher taxes. So just like the libertarians are kind of the extreme end on the right of the Republicans, socialists would be the extreme far left of the Democrats. Socialism has a pretty bad reputation in America because of their association with our next party, which is 
the Communist Party. This is a party that for Americans will be forever linked with Russia, or as they were called at the time, the Soviet Union during the Cold War. We're going to look back on the communist a couple times this year. But even though communism didn't really seem to work economically, the idea is that you get rid of private property and you share everything, which kind of sounds good. But really, it takes away the people's incentive to work. And it was never successful. The communist Soviet Union was really more of a totalitarian state with dictators in which the people didn't have any rights. Though if you think of communism, think of them calling for the rights of the workers over the owners of the business. Okay, so as you can see, we've barely scratched the surface here on political parties, and I highly recommend that you spend more time looking into the various parties. Again, talk to mom and dad or a relative or a friend. There's also a ton of information on the internet, but as always, be careful of what source you get that information on, and we're going to talk about that more in our next video. But before you do, let's review. Okay, because two parties have always dominated in U.S. history, we refer to a America as having a two parties, two party system. That one was easy. True or false, the US Constitution established the two party system. Well, you know that that one's false because the Constitution says nothing about political parties. The two parties that have dominated for more than 150 years are, that one is easy, I hope you got it. Democrats and Republicans, of course. Of the major parties, which one is most associated with wanting to cut taxes? If you said Republicans, you're right. Which third party wants little to no government interference? This isn't the big two. This was one of our third parties, and they want no government interference. That's the Libertarians, of course. Which U.S. political parties would likely approve a plan to help unemployed workers? Okay, the Democrats would, the Socialists would, and the Communists would. Which U.S. political parties would disapprove of a tax on businesses to clean up the environment? Well, we know the Green Party would approve, but the people who would disapprove would be the Republicans and the Libertarians, no taxes. Which U.S. political parties would likely approve of a plan to provide cheaper health care? Do you know? Democrats, socialists, and communists, of course. Which U.S. political party would likely approve of a plan for the government to take over all businesses? That's a little extreme for some parties. That would be the communists, okay? The communists would want to take over the businesses and share it with the people. Okay, so I want to thank you guys for watching. Again, I have some great lessons, teachers, to get more in depth into these parties. Up next, we're going to be looking at elections, candidates, and the media. So be sure to subscribe. And again, thanks for watching.